have to choose between one or the other. A clean environment is good for business and job growth. Now to the Port of Baltimore. The Port of Baltimore is critical to our economy. 13% of our state economy, more than 20,000 jobs directly related, directly related to the Port of Baltimore. $137 million a day to our local economy. That's the Port of Baltimore. And on March 26, when the Francis Scott Key Bridge was brought down by the Dolly, the port was closed. The economy came to a standstill because the port could not operate. Thank you, President Biden, for coming to our rescue and being with us all of the way. We mourn and continue to mourn the six lives that were lost, but I want to thank our Captain President Biden for being with us from the very first moments. I want to compliment Team Maryland, Governor Moore, our alleged congressional delegation, the city and county officials. We all stood together. And let me thank the IOA and our workers for what they did in standing with us to make sure the port would remain strong. The port is open and is humming today. We're doing great. We've recovered and we're getting stronger. And thank you to the Biden administration. We're holding the owners of the Dolly responsible for all the costs so it will not be a burden to the taxpayers. We're recovering the funds. And we're going to rebuild that bridge and we're going to do it at record speed thanks to President Biden, thanks to Team Maryland. Biden's record for the Port of Baltimore and our environment is incredible. Yes, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, we couldn't do it without the Biden administration. And we're here today to say thank you, President Biden, for that. The Howard Street Tunnel that will allow us to double stack, making our port more competitive. Mid-Bay is on its way to make sure that we have a dredge site for our dredge material so we can keep the port to its, its needed depth. New investments at Seagirt and Dundalk Marine Terminal with partnerships with the federal government. Our environmental leadership in remain, removing lead from pipes for the safety of our children and replacing school buses in Baltimore City, that's all part of the Biden record of helping our community. Light rail vehicles being replaced. And today, an announcement, $147 million plus to help this port be more competitive and more green by decarbonization and electrification of our equipment here at the Port of Baltimore. What a record the Biden administration has provided for our economy and our future. So to President Biden, we in Baltimore say thank you for everything that you have done. The Port of Baltimore's future is as bright as the weather we have today. Thank you, President Biden. Please welcome Senator Chris Van Hollen. It's great to be with you on this special occasion. If you could join me in giving it up and thanking Senator Cardin, because he may not be running for re-election, but he is running fast through the finish line, and I want to thank him for all he's done for the state of Maryland. And I want to join him and join all of you in welcoming President Biden back to the great city of Baltimore. Welcome back, Mr. President. We, are, we know that he cares deeply about this city. He's been here many times. The last time he was here was in the wake of tragedy. It was in the aftermath of the collapse of the Key Bridge. Its twisted remains were right behind us back then, blocking the channel. We had lost six good men. Ships could not pass. Workers were out of a job. And at that time, President Biden came here to Baltimore, and he said this, your nation has your back. Baltimore, Maryland, your nation 
has your back, and he has delivered. So thank you, Senate President Biden, for what you've done. He's following through every day. He followed through right after he made those statements. Uh, we had the heroic efforts of the first responders. We had the unified command take over. I want to thank the Coast Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers. I want to thank the Maryland team, Team Maryland, under the direction and authority of Governor Moore. Thank you, Governor, for what you and your team did. I want to thank Mayor Scott, and I want to thank County Executive Johnny O, and everybody who came together, from the local to the state to the federal level, volunteers from all over the city helping in that hour of need. So now, we've got to make sure that we rebuild the bridge. And the good news is we've gotten a federal commitment of 90 percent federal funding. And as Senator Cardin said, we're going to work together as a delegation, Senator Cardin, Congressman Fume, Congressman Hoyer, Sarbanes, Ruppersberger, the whole team to get a 100 percent funding commitment from the federal government before the end of this year to rebuild the key bridge. And this port, and you reflect it here, is the beating heart of such an important part of our economy in Baltimore and throughout the state of Maryland. As you know, it supports 20,000 direct jobs, including 2,400 union longshoremen. It includes 30,000 indirect jobs uh, throughout the state for about $70 billion, $70 billion a year in economic activity in the state of Maryland. We also know, and the country learned after the tragedy, that the Port of Baltimore is essential to our entire country. It, of course, onloads and offloads more cars, light trucks, lots of farm equipment. When the, when the port closed, the entire economy in this region and parts of other countries took a hit. So that is why we all work so hard to make sure that the Port of Baltimore remains healthy, that its heartbeat continues. And that is why we work to secure $30 million in federal funds uh, to reconstruct Berth 11 right here down at the port. That's why, as Senator Cardin said, we have worked at the federal level, the state level, and the local level for funds to make sure that we addressed and modernized the Howard Street Tunnel so we can now double stack uh, rail shipments out of the port of Baltimore. That will now allow double stacking from Maine to Florida and will again add thousands of jobs and more economic activity. That's why we dredge the port. That's why the Army Corps of Engineers makes sure that that deep channel can be sustained. And that is also why we're here today, to announce the $147 million in federal funding for this very important effort to make sure that as the port conducts its operations, we also have a healthy environment, that we have clean air, that we do what we can to address the climate crisis, which is having such harmful impacts and high costs in Maryland and around our country. This $147 million is part of a $3 billion investment that the federal government is making in our ports around the country. And I want to thank EPA Administrator Regan. We work very closely together to help protect the Chesapeake Bay and sustain the bay. And this is part of the effort to make sure that operations here at the Port of Baltimore and around the country are done in a sustainable way that makes sure that we can have a healthy environment. And I want to thank Gloria Nelson from Turner Station for all the work that she does on behalf of the local community. Finally, what this is all about, of course, is making sure that we have good paying jobs for people throughout the city, throughout the region, and that we have a strong economy that can support businesses of all sizes. And we want to make sure that as we build that strong economy, that we have a system and an economy that works for everybody with shared prosperity. And that's why I was honored to join uh, the longshoremen on the picket lines to make sure that they receive their fair share 
for their hard work. And I want to thank Scott Cowan and all the members of the ILA. And I want to thank President Biden, who also has stood on picket lines around the country and who stood with the ILA during those negotiations, making sure that they can get a fair deal. Because at the end of the day, what we all want is a fair deal for ourselves and for our families. And that is what the Port of Baltimore can do as an engine of our economy here, making sure that everybody has a chance to prosper through the economic activity that it produces. So thank all of you who are part of this great port operation. And thank you to President Biden for never taking his eye off the ball and keeping his commitment, not just with respect to opening the port and rebuilding the bridge, but keeping his commitment to Maryland and the country when he says, our nation has your back. He had our back. Thank you, President Biden. Please welcome Representative Kawisi Umfume. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. One of the downsides of following people who get a chance to say everything you want to say is that there's very little left for you to say. Or as the late uh, Paul Sarbanes once said, I have something to say, but it has all been said before me. I do want to say this, though. You look great. It is good to be back here. Some of you remember we were here two years ago when we first passed the legislation that enabled all of this. And I just want you to know that we're going to say a few things and get out of your way. And I have to tell you, there are a few people behind me, so you'll appreciate me being short. You know, speeches don't have to be eternal to be unforgettable. So as a great philosopher once said, I'll be brief no matter how long it takes. So I want to start by thanking, obviously, the president. We stood here two years ago when we first passed these major pieces of legislation, which would ultimately reflect themselves in the money that, money that we're being awarding today. Joe Biden, needless to say, will have a special and unique place in American history. Not because of his number as president, but of his heart, of his goodwill, of his intentions, of his sincerity, and of the simple eloquence of his example. And his example is one that makes us all feel good as Americans. So when he said to all of us, don't worry, we will see this all the way through, none of us really did. And so we are here today to celebrate that. Now, I do want to say that Ben Cardin, who was out a moment ago, and Senator Chris Van Hollen are two of the best United States senators that we have in this country. Oh, you should applaud, because they represent all of you, and they're great. We work together as a team. And that's why when you hear Team Maryland over and over again, it's not a euphemism or something to say. It's because that is our team. I want to also say and thank Governor Moore, who will be out here shortly, for the leadership that he has shown on this and so many other issues, particularly the issue of the bridge. And I want to thank the mayor of the city of Baltimore, Brandon Scott, whose leadership was exemplary when we've gone through so many different challenges, whether it's the bridge or finding money now for this equipment and all the other things. Brandon Scott is Baltimore and has done a tremendous job. And soon to be out, even though he'll be introduced by himself, thank you, I'm sure the mayor thanks you, I'm sure, is soon to be Congressman Johnny Olszewski, who will be coming out to say a few words. Now, Scott Cowan, I don't know if you're here or not, but if you are, just let me say that it's always been a pleasure to work with the hardworking men and women of Local 33, the longshoremen, and you're going to get a special surprise while one of those today that I'm not going to tell you about, 
but it's good to see so many people from organized labor here, the unions of this country, here in support of the most pro-union president ever. I'd be remiss if I didn't call again the names of two very important groups, the Coast Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers, for all that they have done to help us. Now, you heard the name of Gloria Nelson. I'm going to repeat it because we want to make sure that people know that the affected communities have been fighting for a long time to find a way to be heard. Ms. Nelson is the mayor of Turner Station. And so whether it's her or the people of Curtis Bay or the South Baltimore communities or every inlet in which this bay and this river touches, we hear you, we see you, and we are there for you as we are there for the Chesapeake Bay. So it's important as you take this opportunity to celebrate, and I hope we do celebrate here, that you remember how fortunate this city has been through many, many years and through many, many presidents and how important it has always been, because all of you have continued to push and to make your presence known. I'm happy to be a part of Team Maryland. I'm happy to have the president here today. We are happy to announce this award of $147 million, and we're glad that we can do it under sunshine, blue skies, and in front of all of you. Thank you very much. Please welcome Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. Good afternoon, Baltimore. Welcome again to the beautiful, best port in America, the Port of Baltimore that is once again buzzing. Let's give a big round of applause for all of our port workers here who do the great work each and every day. I want to say thank you to the best congressional delegation that any mayor has in these United States of America for being so, so important to us, but most importantly for always understanding how important Baltimore is, not just to our state, but this country. Thank you all. We are blessed to have President Joe Biden and his entire team here again. We've been so blessed to have his presence and his partnership so often since the very first day uh, he became president. Of course, he was one of the first people who called us following the Key Bridge tragedy, and that partnership we know continues to shine bright today. But that's not the only thing. We've had the Biden-Harris administration's partnership in investing in our young people like ever, through, never before, through the American Rescue Plan Act. We've had the Biden-Harris uh, administration's partnership in reducing gun violence in Baltimore at historic rates thanks to their support through the first ever Office of Gun Violence Prevention. We've had their partnership in investing in our infrastructure to help Baltimore's renaissance grow and to overcome historic wrongs like the highway to nowhere that destroyed a black community in West Baltimore. And there are so many other things that you see sprouting up throughout the city of Baltimore that are happening thanks to President Joe Biden. And Mr. President, I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to personally say thank you for being the mentor and friend to me that you have been. When I wanted to pursue or press an issue, you supported me. When I was taking on racist attacks after the Key Bridge collapse, you told me to keep going and to keep proving them wrong. Every single time I had a question, every single time I needed help, you were there. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. I'm a better man and a better mayor because you took the time to invest in me and into my city. And in this precarious moment, thank you. And in this precarious moment in American history, I am so honored to call President Biden a friend and a partner in the work to make Baltimore the best version of itself through tenacity, unfailing vision, and of course, a little bit of Old Bay Sprinkle grit. And today, I could not be prouder to welcome him home because he'll tell you all the Bidens came to Baltimore first. And all of you again, 
to the greatest city in America, the city of Baltimore. Thank you very much. Please welcome Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, President Biden, for the ways in which you continue to show up for Baltimore and for us all. Your return to Baltimore today and your unwavering commitment to our communities comes as no surprise to anyone who has been lucky enough to work alongside you these past four years. Thank you also to our Governor Wes Moore, our, our outstanding federal delegation, Senators Cardin and Van Hollen, Representatives Hoyer and Fume, Rupersberger and Sarbanes, our port workers, members of the ILA, my dear friend, Mayor Scott, and to all of our partners in progress. All partners who stood beside you, Mr. President, and the entire Biden-Harris administration, working hand in hand to respond to the tragic collapse of the Key Bridge, the most coordinated and comprehensive government response I have ever seen. Your team got to work, never stopped, ensuring our communities had everything they needed. As we continue to remember our six neighbors lost to that disaster, we are reminded why it matters to have a president like you, someone grounded in decency, humility, with a deep care and compassion for others. It's that kind of leadership that reopened the Port of Baltimore in 11 weeks, not 11 months. Leadership that recognizes unions help to build a middle class. Leadership that passed the Inflation Reduction Act, showing that America can tackle our challenges head on while making the largest investment in our nation's history to combat climate change. Leadership that helped deliver the American Rescue Plan and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, tools that are empowering local leaders to make unprecedented investments in our workforce, our roads, our parks, and our waterways. And leadership that will ensure we rebuild the Key Bridge and do it quickly. Welcome again to Baltimore, Mr. President, Thank you not only for coming back, but thank you for always having our back. God bless you, God bless Baltimore, and God bless the United States of America. Good afternoon. What's going on, Marilyn? It is good to be here, and it's great to be in this moment, and it's great to be here in this space. Because last time that President Biden was here in Baltimore, he was here because of a tragedy. A tragedy not just to our state, not just to the city of Baltimore, not just to Dundalk and the Turner Station, but also a tragedy to our entire country. So it's great that today we're here because of triumph. A triumph not just for Baltimore and Maryland and a triumph for Dundalk and Turner Station, but a triumph for this entire country. And to really understand this moment, it's important that we think back to where we were just seven months ago. Because seven months ago, we stood here together looking out over the Patapsco River, where we saw a ship that was the size of three football fields that was stuck in the middle of a shipping channel with the Francis Scott Key Bridge sitting on top of it. It's a landscape that for many of us was unimaginable because I'd never seen that landscape before because that bridge has been there since I've been born. As a state, we faced a terrible tragedy, and in that moment, we did exactly what Marylanders always do. We picked ourselves up, we dust ourselves off, we got together, and we came back stronger. Yeah. 
And so when people asked the question, they said, so how did y'all get the channel cleared so quickly? How are y'all able to move a massive vessel without a single major injury? How are you able to support our amazing workers and businesses and victims of the tragedy? And my answer is simple. It's because we have the best workers on the planet and it's because I have the best partners that any governor could ever ask for. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, and I will say it until my last breath, thank you, President Biden, and thank you, Vice President Harris. The Port of Baltimore is back, and it's better than ever because of their leadership and the leadership of so many that are here with us today. It's the leadership of our extraordinary congressional delegation, including Senators Cardin and Senator Van Hollen, Congressman Nfume, Congressman Hoyer, Congressman Sarbanes, Congressman Ruppersberger, I want to thank you all for your leadership. We're here because of the extraordinary military and state and federal leaders that made up Unified Command who did an absolutely amazing job helping to get this city and this state back on our feet. We're here. We are here because of our extraordinary state and elected officials, including my friends Mayor Scott and my friend County Executive Congressman Johnny Olaszewski. <laughs> We're here because of our amazing union partners. We're here because of the yes. We're here because of the extraordinary private sector partners who stepped up. We're here because of Marylanders all across the state of both political parties and all backgrounds who stepped up to serve because the people of our state needed it. And when the story of the port is written, it won't just be the story of survival. It'll be the story of renewal. The Port of Baltimore is the gateway to America, and we are going to live up to that namesake. The Port of Baltimore will continue to lead in the transportation of cars and farm equipment. The Port of Baltimore will continue to lead in the import and export of billions of dollars of cargo every single year. And thanks to the leadership of President Biden, the Port of Baltimore will now be the leader in clean energy transition that the whole country will look at in awe. And, and let's be clear, this matters not just because of things like zero emission vehicles and electrification will be good for the environment. But you know what it's also good for? The people who will be building the grid. The people who will be installing the equipment. The people who will be maintaining the equipment. This transition will not just be good for the environment, but it'll be good for the people that matters most, our workers. And I want to end by speaking directly to our friends from the International Longshoremen's Association. Brothers and sisters, I know that this year has been hard. And I know you and I have gathered here at Dundalk Terminal quite a few times in these past months. We met right here after the bridge collapsed, and we told you that this administration would have your back, that we would make sure that you got the financial relief that you needed, and that you would get back on the job as fast as possible. We met here again when you went on strike, and together, we stood on the picket lines. You have been there for us every single day, and I'm here to tell you that we will be with you every single day as well. No matter the challenge, no matter the test, please know this, you have a true partner in the Biden-Harris administration, and you will always have a true partner in the Moore-Miller administration as well.
This is going to be Maryland's decade. We have said it, and these other governors are starting to believe it now. This is Maryland's decade, but the reason it is going to be Maryland's decade is because we will be union strong. And in that spirit, I am honored to introduce our next speaker. She is a port worker. She's a proud member of the ILA. She's a person who is the first and only female rubber tire gantry operator at the Port of Baltimore, so she's a history maker. And she's someone who defines what it means to be Maryland tough and Baltimore strong. Please welcome my new friend, Gwendolyn Stewart Williamson. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gwen Williamson. I have been a longshoreman in Local 333 with the International Longshoremen's Association for 20 years. I am a grandmother of four beautiful young women. My son is also a longshoreman here at the Port of Baltimore. We are a third generation family of longshoremen, as my grandfather was a longshoreman at uh, Yorktown, Virginia. I come from a family of achievers. We weren't taught I can't, only I can. I am the first, as Governor Moore mentioned, first female rubber tire gantry crane operator at the Port of Baltimore. I can't adequately express how honored and proud I am to have been given the opportunity to introduce my President of the United States. President Biden's administration is the most pro-union and supportive of workers' rights in this country's history. My family is extremely grateful for all of the life-enriching policies enacted by his presidency. I take great pride in knowing that there are items in every single household in this country that was at some point handled by a longshoreman. President Biden signed the infrastructure legislation that made sure we had the support to do our jobs. He responded with support when the tragic bridge collapsed. Overnight, we became unemployed, but a few months later, we are back. He has been a hands-on president. The cap on insulin affected me personally because I am a diabetic and as well as a lot of my union members. The funding we are receiving is a direct result of President Biden's priorities and focus on making our lives better. He is a good man of character. Please join me in welcoming our President Joe Biden. Thank you, Gwen, for that introduction. And a big congratulations to your fellow longshoremen who just won a record wage gain. You deserve it, man. Yeah. You know, I'm called the most pro-union president in history. It's not hard, man. It's a simple proposition. Middle class built this country, and unions built the middle class. Yeah. Period. I mean it. They sacrificed so much to keep America's ports open, especially during the pandemic. They deserve a strong contract. I also want to thank Governor Moore. I think he may be the best governor in the country, man. Where are you, Gov? I tell you what, man. I wish I had played ball with him. <laughs> you know, and, and Mayor Scott, where, where, I, I, there you go. Stand up, man. Let him see you. 
This guy's got being a mayor of a major city is one of the hardest jobs in American politics. They think you have all the answers and they know where you live. <laughs> And Johnny O, county exec, where are you, Johnny? There you are. I used, to, I used to be a county councilman. I think it's the hardest job in America. People think you know what you have. You don't have nearly what they think you have. They think you can solve all your problems, and when you can't, you get in trouble. And they know where you live, too, so thank you, Johnny O. Appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you in Congress next year, man. Look forward to seeing you in Congress. And Senator Ben Cardin, Senator Chris Van Halen, Von Halen. What the hell's his name? He's new. <laughs> Chris, Von, <laughs> Chris and I have been doing this for so many years now, it's getting old. Or at least I'm getting old. Chris isn't getting old. And Ben, we're going to miss you in the Senate. We're going to miss you in the Senate. And I want to thank Congressman Mufumi and Ruppersberger and Sarbanes. But, you know, every time I see Sarbanes, he seems about a foot taller. I don't know, man. The work his dad taught me that I better understand and learn. I better learn Greek or I'm going to be in trouble. And my good friend, and he is a good friend, we've shared a lot together, Steny Hoyer. Steny, thanks for all you've done, pal. And from my cabinet, EPA director, Michael Regan. You know, uh, last spring, in the dead of night, that massive container ship crashed into Key Bridge. Within seconds, steel beams crumbled into the harbor like toothpicks. 30,000 people lost their daily route to work, to school, and to home. 20,000 port-related paychecks became at risk. Six construction workers were killed in the process. All were Marylanders, hardworking, strong, and selfless. I remember their families, as many of you did, and I vowed to them we never forget the contributions these men made to this city. And we, and we do everything possible to reopen this port as fast as it possibly could be. I'm proud to say, with all the folks sitting assembled here and the union assembled here, you did just that. The Port of Arlo is back open for business. I want to thank the Coast Guard, the Navy, the Army Corps of Engineers, helped remove 50,000 tons of concrete and steel wreckage. 50,000 tons. Some thought the Sippy Channel would be blocked for six months or more, but you cleared it in 78 days. 78 days. <laughs> On top of this, my administration provided $60 million in federal funding to res for re response and recovery, offered grants to displaced port workers to get paid to help with the cleanup and teamed up with businesses to keep auto, farm, auto and farm shipments moving. Result, 8,000 workers back on the job. Over 100,000 tons of cargo passed through this port again on a daily basis. But as I promised last spring, we won't stop until the new bridge is finished completely. Finished, finished, finished. I'm calling on Congress to fully fund it this year, before we go out, this year. A new bridge built with American steel and union labor. And that's not all. For years, I've been saying it's not enough just to rebuild America. We have to build it back better and stronger than before. That's why today I'm proud to announce we're delivering $3 billion in funding from my Inflation Reduction Act to help clean up and modernize ports in 27 different states and territories, from Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and beyond, including, yes, Puerto Rico. I'd like to take that guy for a swim out there. Anyway. Steny's looking at me, don't get going, Joe. Don't get going, Joe. Slow up. <laughs> but this also includes a $447 million for the Port of Baltimore to upgrade its cargo equipment, infrastructure, and power grid. Folks, ports are the linchpin, the linchpin to America's supply chain. They keep goods moving, keep the economy strong, and they employ over 100,000 union workers 
from Teamsters to Longshoremen. But for too long, they've run on fossil fuels and aging infrastructure, putting workers at risk and exposing nearby communities to dangerous pollution. Studies show more childhood asthma, lung disease, and heart disease, and cancer in folks who live close to ports. This is about environmental justice. I asked Gloria, who you heard from earlier, or any of the neighbors in Turner Station or across the water in Curtis City, communities too long left behind, simply wrong. The new $3 billion funding we're delivering today will help ports and communities all across America. It will cut ports opening costs, strengthen supply chains, make America businesses more competitive, and keep consumer prices down while slashing carbon pollution and support an estimated 40,000 new good-paying jobs at the port in clean energy manufacturing all across America. In fact, the funding for this port is estimated to create 2,000 new jobs. Jobs for longshoremen, iron workers, engineers, electricians, utility workers, steel workers, laborers, and so much more. Good paying union jobs you can raise a family on. A lot of college degree. We're making sure all new port equipment funded by the Clean, port, Clean Ports program will be operated and maintained by people, not by robots, which are going to protect those jobs far into the future. Folks, this is just a smart part of, small part of what we call investing in America agenda. To invest in America and all Americans, it's working. Just look at how far we've come from the crisis we inherited from my predecessor. Example, my American Rescue Plan, which is not a single Republican voter for, I might add, although there's conversions, delivering immediate economic relief to those who need it most and got us through the pandemic. The bipartisan infrastructure law is one of the most significant laws ever, ever written to modernize our roads, our bridges, our ports, our airports help replace every poisonous lead pipe in America, and bring affordable high-speed internet to every household. My predecessor promised Infrastructure Week every week for four years, but he never built a damn thing. <laughs> Our Chips and Science Act, also bringing semiconductor and advanced manufacturing back home where it belongs, where it started. And through the Inflation Reduction Act, we made the largest investment ever in history to fight climate change and accelerate clean energy which is the way my predecessor said, by the way, he'd repeal it if elected. Folks, a lot at stake here. We're all investing in the American agenda and because of what we did. Remember how we were going to go into depression and all that stuff? Guess what? We got the strongest economy in the world, the whole damn world. And in America, our Invest in America agenda has already attracted one trillion dollars in private sector investment. One trillion dollars in ener clean energy, high-tech factories, and so much more. Here's what it means for Maryland. So far, in this state alone, it, prov it provides 13 billion for nearly 1,000 infrastructure, energy, and manufacturing projects. It matters. For example, look at Baltimore and the Potomac Tunnel. It's 150 years old. I've walked through that. I used to commute every day back and forth from Wilmington to, to Washington. I've walked through it. It's leaking. It needs to be replaced. It's badly needed. Yep. And thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure law, it finally is being replaced. When the project is done, it will shorten commute time significantly, increase safety, and in the process will create 20,000 new construction jobs. And that's just one example of the investment. Folks, It's clear, after years of broken promises by the last administration, Kamala and I and our entire administration are delivering for America. We created a record 16 million new jobs, more than any single presidential term in American history. Wages are up. We brought inflation down to the same rate it was before the pandemic. In fact, wage gains have outpaced inflation. Some people have more money in their pockets. Interest rates are falling. Unemployment has been this low. It hadn't been this low for this long, been over 50 years because of you all. 
Manufacturing is making a comeback. Where the hell is it written saying we can't be the manufacturing capital of the world? Where is that written? So we're bringing jobs back home and factories home. And by the way, we've invested more in red states than in blue states. Because I said when we got elected, we would pray for all Americans. More in red states than in blue states. And those of you in Congress know that there's a group of Republican members of the House saying we got to keep this going because all of a sudden they're realizing how helpful it is. America, once again, has the world, world's strongest economy. Folks have filed a record 19 million new business applications since we took office. Each filing for new business application is an act of hope. Put it all together in thousands of cities and towns, we're seeing the great American comeback story. Consumer confidence is up this month larger than ever. The economy is growing. Middle class is doing well. We're showing we're the only nation in the world that always emerges stronger from a crisis than we went into the crisis. The only one. We have to keep that progress going and growing. Let me close with this. When I, when I see this port now, cranes in the air, ships and cargo on the move, I hope and feel what I hope you feel, a real sense of pride. I mean it sincerely. Pride. Pride in your community, pride in our country, pride in the capacity of our labor unions. That's what Baltimore Strong is all about. It's about pride. I know because generations of Bidens lived here since the 1850s. My dad was born here. He always told me, the true measure of a person is not how often you get knocked down. It's how fast you get back up. That's Baltimore. It gets back up fast. That's Maryland. It gets back up. And that's why I've never been more optimistic for our future. We just have to remember who the hell we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. So let's keep working together. God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.